online. We're glad that you are here. You are part of this community, so we just want to invite you to be part of everything that happens today. Be engaged, be ready to hear from God. All right, let's sing it out. Here we go. When all I see is the battle, you see my face.
talks a lot about our foundation, where our lives are built, what they're dependent on, where we find security, where we find hope. We talk, about, talk about this a lot around here. Our hope is in Jesus. Peace is found in and through Jesus. And like, like this song says, no matter what the storms have in store for us in life, like he's gonna be constant, consistent, faithful. Be sure that he has a plan. Show up to be part of it. Rain. and minds, rediscover your faithfulness today, wherever we are. God, we represent uh, a lot of different experience with, with you. God, I pray that if we, yeah, we've been walking with you for a long time, that we would remember today why, why we love you, why we depend on you. Recall the areas that you've been faithful in in our lives. God, if we're brand new to this first time in, in a space like this, God, I pray on behalf of us that we would yeah, just be receptive to what you have to say. God, really, really listen to what your, your plans are, what your love looks like, what your hope looks like. 
what life can look like when we embrace your peace and your joy. God, I pray over every, every room and every space on this campus in this moment. God, I pray for every room online. Meet us where we are today like you always do. Inspire us, encourage us, move us into the direction that you've designed us to be and become. God, we thank you for all that you are. We thank you for this community. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go ahead and say a quick hello to someone next to you. in the front. I love it. Right on. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. If you're in the room today, we're honored that you uh, made some space to uh, celebrate this Sunday morning with us. If you're online, um, we're stoked to have you. And I know, you know, online can't always see that you're here, but would you all join me in welcoming everybody who's online this morning? Come on, make some noise for online people. You are a part of us, um, no matter whether you're in the, the Bonners, uh, Bonner County area or somewhere across Idaho or just across the nation or the world. We're just thrilled to have you here today. And you might be wondering, I, I, I'm shocked how many of you that I'm bumping into that are newer to Cedar Hills in the last few weeks. And sometimes you show up at a church, maybe for the first time, you haven't gone to church much before. You're like, what kind of church is this? And uh, you know, one of the easiest ways to describe the kind of church we are is we're just a Jesus church. We just believe um, in the person of Jesus, what he did, the life he lived, um, the things he taught. And we do our absolute best to understand what it means to follow him into the best life um, ever. That's kind of what our series has been all about. But we believe that all throughout the year. Um, and we're just hoping that you can experience um, a taste today of the kind of life that Jesus came um, to offer you. One of the things that relates to that that I just want to invite you into is something called baptism. We love water baptism. Um, but baptism is this great um, opportunity for you and I to let the world know um, that we're serious about following Jesus. And we want to live our lives for him, um, not just for the next week or the month, for the rest of our lives. And if you've never been baptized in water before, um, we would love to invite you into that experience. We've got a baptism coming up in two weeks on December 3rd. Um, we set up a little tank right over here, like this is the splash zone, so bring your tarps and things if you sit over here. But we'll have a tank we bring in, and it's just an opportunity for you um, to publicly proclaim, I've given my life to Jesus, and I want to serve him. And so if that's of interest to you, uh, you can uh, go to cedarhillschurch.com slash events at our website, find more information. If there's questions you have, we would love um, to answer those for you. You can find those at that same link or even on your connection card to get you all the information you need, but would love to celebrate in that baptism. I have had the privilege of watching um, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people take that step of baptism here at Cedar Hills over the years, and nothing warms my heart more than to see that statement. So, um, so let us know how we can help you with that. I had a chance last week, and I saw some of you there, um, but I was able to attend um, an event for one of our uh, local partners, Life Choices Pregnancy Center, and uh, their office is just right over here across the street on McGee Road, and uh, they had an incredible event celebrating not just all that they accomplished over the last year, but looking ahead to what God has in the future. Um, Life Choices comes alongside um, families and specific situations, not just, not just women, but men as well who find themselves facing some sort of an unplanned pregnancy. And the reality is, statistically, none of our families will make it through this life without some experience with an unexpected pregnancy. I mean, it's going to touch us one way or another. And they're there to come alongside in grace and compassion and to help those who find themselves not sure what to do, um, helping them understand um, what the option of life looks like for them and then providing them with the resources that they need. Um, they helped somewhere over 350 women last year in our local area who found themselves in a tough spot and didn't know what to do. And um, the list of services they provide is just endless. And so it's so cool to be reminded um, about what they do and how um, blessed we are to be able to sponsor them and support them. We, we are a part of their ministry by supporting them through your giving every month. It's one of the, I think, nine or so local partners that we support. Um, but it was just cool to be there to hear um, the difference that they're making. So I uh, just know that when you invest financially here, or when you invest in other ways as well, um, it's not just what we do within the walls or the ministries of our church, but it's through great partners, um, life, life, choices, uh, life choices, and so many others. So if you want to give back to God today, there's an envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. There's also a connection card. It's a great way for us to pray for you, to let us know what God's doing in your life that's worth celebrating. Um, and if you're uh, newer, it's a chance to make yourself known so we can come alongside and support you in uh, this uh, great life with Jesus that we're all invited into. We get to wrap up our series today. It's been a fun fall going through the series Best Life Ever, and we saved the best for last. So Rodney Wright is bringing the talk today. Um, so uh, we're excited to hear from Rodney. And so check out the screens. Rodney will be up in a second. 
Lord. Good morning, Cedar Hills. <laughs> so good to be here with you today. Uh, what, a, what a joy it is to be here. And those of you that are online, here's the camera that's on right there. Uh, we're glad that you're, you're there this morning. Hope you're watching, enjoying in your pajamas. Uh, didn't take a shower probably or get ready, but, uh, you know, maybe next week you could come here in person and be here. So anyway, um, I, that's all I want to say to the online people. That, th that didn't sound very encouraging, did it? <laughs> I'm kind of rambling here, but uh, what, what a joy just to be here. I was greeted this morning uh, by a hug from God driving up from Coeur d'Alene and seeing the beautiful tamarack trees in color, and it reminded me that uh, when we get to heaven and there's a long line, we should all say to people, hey, you get in front of us, we got to live in North Idaho when we were on <laughs> earth. You know what I'm saying? Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. A, a beautiful spot here. Well, I'm excited to be here and jump into this series, so let, let, let me do that. Uh, this best life, life ever. Uh, just the graphics are pretty groovy. I really like the, the colors on the screen. Uh, a nice throwback there. And uh, this whole thing about our best life. I've enjoyed all the talks. I've been able to listen to them. I appreciate just Eric setting the bar about thinking differently um, and about the mindset. Uh, he talked about uh, John 3.16, this whole message of eternal life, what that even means. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe would not perish but have eternal life or everlasting life. In the Jewish mind, that was a concept about a quality of existence here and now. Perishing or eternal life was more about the quality of life that we live today. And so I love that. And looking today about our mindset um, this word, uh, Doug even mentioned it in one of his talks about, uh, it's the word repentance, metanoia in the Greek, which means just changing how you think. And so this whole series is about a, a little bit of a mindset shift for us, about renewing our minds, taking on the mind of Christ and thinking differently. One person kind of summed up the gospel in this, and I really love this phrase. He said, Jesus didn't come to earth to change the mind of God about humanity. Hey, God, be nice to them. They're okay. They're okay. Jesus came to earth to change the mind of humanity about God. Some of us have that image of God that he's out to get us, right? And Jesus showed us that God's like this, out to help us, right? Out to show us a better way, out to lead us into what we would determine is our best life ever, about following their way. And um, that's what I love about it. In Eric's talk, relationship first, you know, he talked about the Trinity and uh, how, how God made us in their image and made us to relate, to live our lives as they live, other-centered, self-giving in our love and our existence. Uh, Doug talked about uh, perfection, uh, life as a gift, and about growing, continuing to grow. And I had a growing moment this week. I'll just share it real quickly. I went to a, a local bank. And uh, kids, back in the day, we used to have to take money to banks instead of deposit on your phone. But uh, I didn't have my wallet when I went to this bank. I was in Oregon. And I had $170, and I wanted to deposit in my account. So I walked up to the, to the gal at the desk and said, I'd like to make a deposit. And I said, uh, she, I said, what's your name? She said, my name is Trinity. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I said, Trinity, I'd like to make a deposit. I got a lot of problems. I'm just going to share one of my problems. I forgot my wallet today. I'm driving and, and, and out here without my wallet. Can, can you just look up my account and deposit this cash? She said, no, we cannot do that. That's against our policy. We have to have your ID. We have to have a physical ID. I said, well, oh, that's good. I have a picture of my ID on my phone. I'll just show you that. Nope, 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 nope. That won't work. Uh, you have to have a physical ID. So I'm thinking, Trinity, uh, how can we solve this problem today? You know, what, what, <laughs> what else can we do? And she said, well, uh, do you have Apple Wallet? And I said, uh, sure, yeah, I have Apple Wallet. And it's an app on the phone that you have. She said, well, we can upload 
from your app on our bank, your debit card, you can walk over here to the ATM and what's the thing where you just lay your phone over it? QR code, yeah, or, or just a little, you don't even put it in the slot. You like tap it, tap, tap's the word. I got to get these words down for the young kids. It's tapping. <laughs> you just tap your ATM card, and it's like putting your live card into the machine, and then you can make a cash deposit through our ATM. And I did all of that with her assistance. So, I mean, for me to grow in technology, this is like... This is like Moses parting the Red Sea. I mean, this is a big deal, you know? So I texted all my kids, and I said, yay, I'm growing in technology. <laughs> and I love that. Uh, let me just give a word of advice for all of us that are 50 plus. Keep growing in technology, or we're going to get left behind, right? So it's a, it's a crazy world out there. But uh, I love that Doug talked about not perfection, but growth, having that growth mindset and continuing to grow in our faith. Alyssa talked about joy. If you haven't heard that talk, I would just say go back and look it up. It was such a meaningful uh, talk. And then Ron talked about um, his ketchup at Costco. Anybody remember that story? He bought those three ketchups, and then he gave one to a kid in the parking lot, a mom, and it was like a, a God moment. And I just, I can't go to Costco now without thinking, should I buy ketchup, and who, who might need some ketchup here? R Ron totally inspired me. And so I'm so grateful for our teachers that uh, share here. Today our talk is on process emotions. Process emotions. We're even thinking about maybe naming it emotions lie. And emotions can lie, but I really like the thought better of process emotions, what we feel. And the big idea is this today, that we would learn to identify our emotions and process them in healthy ways. And it's really my opinion that this will help us live our best life now. When we learn how to identify, what am I feeling, our emotions, and then process them, what to do with them in healthy ways. So I want to look at that. Now, in the scriptures, uh, the Old and New Testament, uh, it's, it's broken up in, the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew language, the New Testament, Greek, Aramaic. But it, in, the, in the scriptures, they use a word, uh, the word heart. We're going to look at some scriptures today that talk about the heart. Uh, but I want you to know, as we look at this, this word heart, there's a lot of different concepts that were used within the canon of Scripture that really explain or define or how they were looking at this word heart. They, all, they, they obviously saw it as a physical organ uh, that pumped blood throughout our bodies, but they also saw it as things as like uh, your will, your mind, your emotions, your intellect. So it was this crazy kind of cocktail of all kinds of things. Um, and so it wasn't just emotion. It had a lot in mind when they were trying to articulate what they were talking about when they used the word heart in Scripture. So let's take a look at some of the text here of what they say about Scripture. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is what is known as the Jewish Shema. And it says this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone, uh, you must... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. So here again, the scripture, the writer of the scripture encourages us to love, engage our heart, our heart with all of our soul and with all of our strength. Again, this heart is that mixed word of our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect. Let's look at the next scripture here. Uh, Proverbs 25. This scripture really came to me when I first started my recovery. Many of you know my story of addiction and recovery. Uh, I've shared it here many a times. But uh, 26 years ago, when I was seeing a therapist and kind of taking a deep dive into some of my trauma and brokenness and mismanagement uh, of areas of my life, uh, specifically around the area of pornography, uh, the Lord really dropped this scripture in my heart right here. And the scripture is this, the purposes in a man's heart are deep waters. But one who has insight draws them out. The purposes in a man's heart are deep waters. Why are we doing what we're doing? What's this all about? But a man of understanding draws them out. It, this, this scripture, I didn't read the Bible for maybe a year. And this scripture is what sustained me. As I took a deep dive into say, why do I do what I do? What's, what's in here that's maybe broken? And God, how can you continue to lead me to people and resources that could help heal What's going on inside of me with this aspect? Let's look at this next scripture that talks about the heart. 
The scripture teaches us in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That the heart, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, this is all sacred part of us. And that we're to be on guard, that we're to be aware. In fact, I think self-awareness is such a beautiful aspect of how we grow and learn as human beings and follow the way of God is to be aware. What's going on and how am I feeling and learning how to process this. Let's look at another scripture that talks about heart. Psalms 139, 23. Search me. This was the psalmist saying. Search me, O God, and know my what? Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Right? So here the the writer's talking about anxiety, talking about our thinking, saying, inviting God to say, come into my heart. Help me here in, in this process. Let's go to the next text. Matthew 5, teachings of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. So not only our heart can maybe have anxiety or thoughts that are difficult to navigate, but he's talking about, for some of us, uh, the reality of the pure in heart. That what God made, it was good. And that, that there's this sense that our heart can find purity in its sense. Let's go to the next scripture. Here's the opposite of pure in heart. (laughs) The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. I mean, I think that's pretty, I mean, that's, 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 that's the other spectrum, right? A wicked heart. Uh, It reminds me of a story before I finish this verse. I'll stop right here. I have a friend of mine who her name was Faye Severe. She was our youth pastor's wife in Modesto, California, where I went to church as a young boy. Uh, Many of you know, my father was a pastor. I was raised in church. Um, I have a heart for a lot of the kids that are in church here all the time because I was a church rat growing up. Uh, Faye's son, Doug, said, my mom's older now. She has Alzheimer's, and if you want to talk to her, you might want to give her a call. So I picked up the phone, and I called her there. This was uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Got her on the phone, and I said, uh, hi, Faye. This is, do you know who this is? And we had a little conversation, and she says, yes, I do. She said, this is Pastor Wright's boy. I said, that's right. And then she followed without hesitating. Are you still wicked? (laughs) I fell off my chair in my office laughing so hard. I said, no, I'm doing much better these days. She said, I bet your daddy's happy. (laughs) Anyway, wicked. Let's go back to the scripture here. The human heart is most deceitful of all things, and desperately wicked. This word wicked here is in the English, in the English, old English language, it's the word for wickerware. When something gets twisted, like in furniture, like you twist something. And so that the heart at times, and many of us, all of us, I think, know it at one point or another, our heart gets twisted because of sin. What is good, a pure in heart, made in God's image, Sin has that ability to twist, take something that's good and twist it like a disease that has affected all of us. And the good news of Jesus is that he's come to actually straighten out our heart and show us the better way. Who really knows how bad it is? Well, Faye Severe does, uh, but anyway, she's in heaven now. And uh, let's look at the the next scripture here. Uh, Beyond the Septuagint, let's go to the next one here, uh, please. Uh, Psalms 24. May you grant me your hearts, may he grant you, let me start over. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. So this is the psalmist writing to us and saying, may God grant you your heart's desires. So Jeremiah was seeing that the heart was wicked. Well, in his day, as he wrote the weeping prophet, they were actually sacrificing their kids to the false gods. How many know that's like a sad day? right? You might want to say, yeah, there's some distortion or wickedness. And sometimes we see horrific things on the news and things that are happening in the Middle East and all over the world. And how many can say, man, you could see how human hearts get twisted. And yet at the same, uh, the prophets and in the Psalms, he writes about God giving us our heart's desires. So again, same word used in different contexts. Let's go to one more uh, passage. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the heart's desire. God transforming us as we delight in God, and now God giving us our heart's desire in this aspect of our life. So as we look at the text of Scripture, 
uh, they talk about heart from a, like I said, kind of a cocktail of different things. But today I want to extract this whole piece of not just our heart, but our emotions. And there's a difference between what we think and how we feel. And let me just give you a little example of that. If I say hypothetically, uh, I would use an example that would say something like this. I would say, I feel, sometimes we use the word feelings or feel when really we're talking about thoughts. Here's a case in point. This is just an example. This is not true. But if I were to say, I feel like Weston, who leads the singing here, doesn't like me, right? I'm not really expressing, um, I'm not really expressing a feeling. I'm expressing a what? A thought, a belief. I think Weston doesn't like me. Therefore, I feel, now this isn't true as far as I know, but I did test our friendship this morning uh, on the PowerPoint. But anyway, um, <laughs> another point. But I, I think Weston doesn't like me, hypothetically. Therefore, I feel sad, hurt, and depressed. Now, those are feelings that express connected to a thought. That thought can create difficult or uncomfortable emotions in me. Are you following with me? So sometimes we get thoughts and feelings mixed up. We say things like, I feel like, and we're actually expressing a thought. So part of what we do in our growth and, and, and in our maturity and following Christ is we begin to evaluate our thoughts to find out if they're true or not. But our emotions can be very strong. They can have strong impact on us. Emotions are, are a, a natural um, instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstance or our mood or relationship with others, how we're relating. Instinctive or intuitive feelings as distinguished from reasoning or knowledge. They're different. Emotions are more about what we feel. They are instinctive. They are intuitive. They're a gut feeling we get, an, an in, inclination, a sediment, a uh, Heart tenderness, a softness, soft-hearted, tender-hearted. They're, they're those things that we feel, emotions. So I think as I've learned on my journey of faith, we sang a lot about songs about joy today, songs about dancing, songs about emotion. But what I understand is that the healthiest people I know uh, in my 56 years of travel on this earth are ones that, are learned, that have been okay with what they feel. They can actually feel their feelings, and they can learn how to express them in healthy ways. Um, and I don't know what it was like in your family growing up, if you could just think back to your dinner table as a kid or your family systems, but healthy families model a, a place where we can express emotions. And mom and dads, I would just say this for you here in the room, uh, there's a little tool that, that uh, we have used before, and it can be really helpful. Uh, just about going around the table and sharing what we call highs and lows of the day. Highs and lows. Highs are what emotion made you feel the best today and tell us the circumstances surrounding that, right? And so if you're ever at, with, uh, at, with a table with like three-year-olds or five-year-olds, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool, you know? But then the opposite of that is what was an emotion that created some discomfort for you and what was going on around the table? What was happening in your life at that time? When you share thoughts, that's one level, but when you start to share your feelings about something, that creates intimacy, right? It's intimacy. It's into me, you see. Because you're, you're, you're not just sharing with your kids, hey, this is how you brush your teeth, this is how you make your bed. Now, kids, those are all important. Don't get me wrong. Uh, especially Gio, wherever you are, Gio, I, I prayed for you today that you could watch more video games, talk to your mom and dad. And uh, you got to clean your room and keep doing those things. That really helps the video. Okay, anyway, let's move on. But as we create intimate relationships, we learn how to share our feelings. And for some of us, we never saw that modeled, so we just come home and it's all about facts. But as we move into growing and healing individuals, we become ones that share. In fact, I put a, a feeling wheel on the screen, and if you're in uh, home groups or your groups today, you'll be able to look at this uh, in your home groups. But it's just, uh, um, has anyone seen the feeling wheel before? Has anyone ever seen? Raise your hand if you've seen this. Okay, yeah, a few of you have. You can just get this online. You can just Google it. If you want to do some Googling right now during this talk or 
Googling is not the right way to say it, but if you want to look it up, you can find one of these. But it just helps, it helps you know how to label, you know, sad, disgust, anger, fear, surprise, happy. And then just, it, it spans out from there about learning how to identify your feelings. Just identify what's going on. And if you never looked at this, it's really a wonderful tool because you can learn how to identify and express and articulate, how am I feeling today? What's really going on? What was that about, that interaction or that experience? Or, wow, I feel this emotion strong. And you can begin to identify your feelings. Like I said, the healthiest people I know are able to identify their feelings. <clears throat> We, uh, Tracy and I are living in Portland, Oregon for just a short season because um, we're with our kids uh, in, our, in our little travel trailer, 24-foot uh, travel trailer, 24-foot travel tra trailer with no slide outs. How many know we're growing in our marriage? <laughs> Come on, just keeping it real here today. But the joy of being in this travel trailer is to get to be by our grandkids, and 35 days ago, our daughter Whitney gave birth to our little granddaughter. And I want you to meet uh, little Holland. Here she is right here. She's a month old and uh, just a gift. So our little grandson, Louie, has a little sister, right? And uh, he's learning all his emotions because we thought he would just be excited. But he kind of is like, who is mama holding and how come I'm over here, you know? And it's been interesting. He has a placemat that sits on his table. And it has all these faces with different feelings. And he can make grumpy face and surprise face. And, but, but the kids are teaching him how to identify what he feels and learn how to express it. So you can only imagine what we felt, right, when we got to hold her for the first time. I was on a trip teaching in Texas when she came into this world. And I was sitting with a guy in a pickup truck sharing this moment like every guy should. You know what I mean? Like, oh. But it was a beautiful moment. I just teared up and said, Holland, welcome to this world, right? You got to feel to heal. So mom and dad, as you're modeling your faith, may I encourage you, learn how to be aware of what you're feeling and then learn how to express that in healthy ways. Uh, to me, this is what healthy individuals do. Now, let me give you some quick thoughts here as we move on. Truths about emotions. Take a look at these. Here's the first one. Number one, they aren't good or bad. They just are. Jesus had a lot of emotions in his life. He felt sadness. He felt betrayal. He was lonely. He felt pain. He had joy and hunger and anger and compassion. I mean, Jesus had an arrange of emotions that he felt. So feelings aren't good or bad. I want you to understand that. You shouldn't feel that way. Be careful not to say that to your kids or, or to yourself but just first of all, what am I feeling and learn how to identify it? Here's number two. They can cause comfort or discomfort. Some feelings are comfortable. We enjoy those feelings. The arrival of a, of a new child in our family or uh, maybe your sports team wins or maybe the beauty of the tamarack trees like I saw this morning or maybe just a, a nice cup of coffee in the morning, not being rushed. I don't know whatever brings you joy. I don't know what your happy place may look like. Um, your husband gone for the weekend. You know, I don't know what it looks like, but your happy place, it can be, oh, that's comforting. But also we can have feelings that bring discomfort. Ah, I feel insecure. Ah, I feel uh, a little agitated. Ah, I feel peeved or upset or disappointed or discouraged. Those can be discomfort. Feelings that brings dis discomfort to us. Let's look at the next one. Uh, they can inform us. Our feelings can have a way of informing us about things. And that we could say, hey, wonder what's going on. Wonder why I feel this. In fact, having curiosity about your emotions, I think, is really good. You know, I'm feeling a little something right now. I wonder what's that about. Have, have any of you ever been the word triggered before by something? Triggered, right? The holidays can be a time. Maybe interacting with uh, extended family where we can feel triggers, some emotion that reminds us of something happened back in our life that maybe we need to process. And then here's the last one. Emotions can actually deceive us. They can actually deceive us from the truth. Case in point, I feel like Weston doesn't like me. Oh, that's not a feeling. That's a thought. Okay. I think Weston doesn't like me. 
Therefore, I feel sad, hurt, and depressed. I go to Weston. Weston says, Rodney, I hear you don't like me. Or you think I, you, uh, I don't like you. There you go. I said it right there. And I say, yes, that's right. How come? I said, well, I was in Super 1 in Sandpoint the other day, and I saw you, and I walked right by you, and you didn't even say hi to me or look up at me. And I was making eye contact with you. And Weston then says to me, well, what day was that? Well, that was Saturday. And Weston says, well, I wasn't in Sandpoint on Saturday. I was somewhere else. I was uh, up in Bonner's Ferry that day. I wasn't in the store that day. So I had a feeling, or I had a thought, oh, I went by Weston. It wasn't Weston. It was actually Tom Cruise that was there. I thought it was Weston, <laughs> but it was Tom Cruise, right? So I thought it was Weston. It wasn't Weston. I thought he ghosted me or turned the other way. And therefore, it made me feel all these emotions. Now, these feelings were true, but the feelings weren't based on something that was true. Does that make sense? They were based on a lie, a deception. And yet, they were so real and so powerful. So sometimes, we have to learn how to be self-aware of what I'm feeling, but also ask the questions, are these feelings indicating about something that's true or something that's not true? I'm just feeling them. In recovery work, we talk about you have to feel to heal. And many times in recovery, we don't want to embrace our feelings because we're uncomfortable with them and because they trigger maybe old things that have happened in our life or old coping patterns. Let me just say it this way. In health, we feel our feelings, but now we have good ways to process those. That's why here at Cedar Hills, we're big advocates for you not just to attend a weekend service, but turn your chairs face to face and begin to share your life with one another. Because in sharing our lives with group, and this is why I'm such an advocate for recovery groups or anything that gets us into open, honest, authentic relationships. Well, you don't have to pretend. You can just be you and be real about what's going on in life, and you can begin to process that. In my group, I lead with pastors and missionaries all over the country, really all over the world. But sometimes I say, hey, let's do some repentance work together. Let's identify some thinking errors in one another and replace them with the truth, right? And so this is the process of how we can grow and how we can heal. So this is about learning to discern what's going on and asking the question, is it true or not? And then not letting our feelings deceive us. So... Let me ask this question. What am I feeling and why? Well, in the, ne in the next two and a half minutes, <laughs> I want to give you four keys that I think will help you identify and process your feelings in healthy ways. So let's look at these. Here they are. First one is just learn how to label what you're feeling. Uh, second one is feel them. Just feel them. Give yourself to feel them. Number three, express those feelings to others. Hey, this is what I'm feeling. And number four, discern the truth. Is this connected to truth or not, right? Here's what I know about people who continue to grow and heal. Our language would be Christ followers who keep maturing. Is that when you mature, you, you, there's a sense of health about you. And in healthy people I know don't deny feelings, but they can really learn how to process feelings in healthy ways. And many times in our lives... We don't want to process feelings because we're afraid of them because maybe they remind us of a trauma or a wound or something scary that happened in our life when we were young. So instead of leaning into those feelings that cause discomfort, are you picking up what I'm laying down here? Are you with me? Instead of leaning into those feelings that cause discomfort, we avoid them with addictive and uh, addictive coping mechanisms, right? So what are some of mine? Well, I'd rather eat than feel. I'd rather shop than feel, right? I'd rather maybe gossip than feel. Uh, and again, this is where overconsumption or mismanagement of things in life that are not evil at their core, they're good, but they're just taken in unhealthy ways. So this is, that, this is how addictions happen in our lives. Many times it's not because we're quote unquote bad people. Are you still wicked? Many times it's because we are afraid of something. And I have found in my journey of following Jesus that he says, do not be afraid. I am with you. 
And those things that are scary to talk about, they're scary to reveal. They're a secret that you're going to take to your grave because if anybody knew this about you, they definitely wouldn't love you because they would see you. (laughs) My favorite song, Jesus Knows Me, This I Love. I used to sing it, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. But now I sing it, Jesus Knows Me. And I have people in my life that know me They know me on my good days. They know me on my bad days. They know me in some of the traumas that happened when I was younger, the mistakes I've made in my journey. I can be known and I can be loved. And in that process, I can find healing. So as I conclude our time here today, Jesus said things like this in John 8, 32. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus also said this other promise in John 16. He says, I tell you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on this earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Well, thanks, Jesus. I found that to be true. (laughs) But take heart because I've overcome the world. So for me, where it lands, God's fully anticipated our human struggle. Fully anticipated that the human heart would be bent because of sin. It would be like wickerware, twisted, fully anticipated it, entered our condition to reveal, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conquer sin and death. To me, this is what he did on the cross. And now they're sharing their life with us that we can take on their mindset. We can take on the mind of Christ. And so as we conclude our time here today, I want to encourage you today. If you have a secret that's causing pain your whole life and you have not faced it and it's because it's too discomfort creates too much discomfort i pray god would send you to people and resources where you can finally turn that pain and as you step into it may you know you're not alone <laughs> there are many of us in the faith community and in this world who have turned in our pain and looked right at it and said well either you kill me or i kill you but here we go And what I have found that here is a God in Jesus who jumped right in the midst of our twistedness. He who knew no sin became sin, the scripture says. He endured, he became flesh, and he gave his life to share their very life with us today. Would you bow in prayer with me today? (laughs) Lord, I thank you so much for our time here. Um, Thank you for the truth about living our best life ever. I'm so grateful just on my journey when I was afraid of looking at some of the dark experiences that I had growing up as a kid or some of the mistakes I had made, afraid that you would uh, reject me or that the church would only shame me or punish me or kick me out. Um, I found and experienced you differently, that you are a friend of sinners, which means the whole world has hope because of you that you are gentle and easy and that your burden or your, your, your yoke, your, your heart for us isn't burdensome, but it's easy and light. You've actually come to lift the load. And part of that lifting of the load is uh, redeeming the lie we believe. Uh, we talked about this in weeks to come. We're not enough. Uh, we don't measure up. We don't have enough. Just the lies we can believe. And not only the lies, but the, 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 the emotions that come that keep us ensnared to those lies. And I thank you that as you lead us down healing journeys, we can be aware of what's going on. We can ask the question, is this true or is this real? (laughs) Was that Weston or not, Lord, in the grocery store? And we can know the truth. And then the truth can begin to lead us to peace and joy and love. That, Lord, you have already conquered the world. That you are here to walk in those dark valleys with us. And again, I just pray for my friends here today that you would bring people and resources that they would actually give themselves to the process of healing and learning to be thankful for emotions and that they would wake up to life itself and learn to taste and see that you are good because you've come to help us and to restore all things. We thank you for our time and we ask uh, your blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Cedar Hills, you've given me four minutes and 23 seconds longer. Thank you so much. You guys are dismissed. Have a great week. God bless.